minutes to Zatien. Of course, we do have to switch to English because of my guests are from a land far, far away, and they joined us just for this very special occasion. And we're gonna have a great time here. They're gonna tell us a bit about the game, about Call of Duty Black Ops 4, especially for PC. And I'm really excited to welcome here on stage, in Cologne, John Raffers from Treyarch, Thomas, Jonathan Moses from Treyarch as well, and Thomas Wilson from Beanox. Hey guys, have a seat. All right. Thank you for joining us here at Gamescom 2018 on the 10th anniversary of Gamescom in Cologne. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. It is. Is this your yes. first Gamescom? No, my first Gamescom was the last Gamescom in Leipzig. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you've been around for a long time. I have been coming to Gamescoms for a while. Yeah, but to be honest, I visited it once in Leipzig as well, so please don't <laughs> tell anyone. <laughs> and how about you, Jonathan? This is my first Gamescom. Are you excited? I am. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, that's what Gamescom is about, yeah. basically. <laughs> and Thomas, are you staying the whole week? It's, yes. Well, uh, pretty much, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's my second Gamescom. This is second. Last time was in 2010 when I was working on Spider-Man games, so it's been a while. 2010, well, that's already eight years ago. Yes. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Well, here we are. So, well, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's ask the people in front of the stage, who has been with us in 2010? Well, who has been with Gamescom in 2010 already? You. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, that's eight years ago. You and that guy. That's yes, a long time. Well, I was here as well, so <laughs> whatever. Not to uh, talk too much about our ages and <laughs> being in the industry. And guys, you have something very special for us. We're going to talk about Black Ops 4 for PC. And um, can you please, John, can you please start introducing yourself with your role and within your team? So what are you doing, basically? What is it you say you do here, exactly? Uh, my name is John Raffis. I head up communications at Treyarch. And, uh, I, I'm fully committed to helping smart people from saying dumb things on Twitter. So. Okay. That, that's one way to That's most, it. most of, yes, <laughs> okay. that's my job. That's, that's really exciting. And uh, my name's Jonathan Moses. I'm the senior producer at Treyarch, working with uh, the Beanox guys on the PC version of Black Ops 4. And Thomas, uh, you're from I'm, Beanox? Yes, I'm from Beanox, so back in Quebec City, Canada. Uh, so yes, I'm the creative director and also co studio head of the studio. And my role specifically for, that, for the PC version is to make sure that we deliver a AAA quality PC experience. That sounds very promising. And you guys brought us a video with an inside look, with a look behind the scenes. And yes. I would say, let's get it rolling? Sure, All right. roll it. Do with you. What they deserve. This version of the game is custom built for the PC and PC has its own unique platform and give PC gamers what they deserve. This version of the game is custom built for the PC and I think that's going to show through in every part of it. We've developed a really strong partnership with Beanox in addition to Blizzard, who have been tremendously helpful in bringing the game to the Battle.net platform, and that's a first for the franchise. Those of us at Blizzard have been uh, friends with Treyarch for many, many years. When it came to working on Overwatch, we consulted with Treyarch on a number of features. It's the first first-person shooter Blizzard has ever made, so hearing their advice really helped us build out our game. And it's really exciting that we can welcome them onto the Battle.net platform because Call of Duty is a cultural landmark. With all the features of Battle.net, I think it's going to be pretty amazing what Black Ops 4 is going to have to offer. It is going to be fully integrated with all these social features on Battle.net. You'll be able to add friends, talk with your friends, see them play in other games, party up, and interact with them in game. We're going to be able to talk to players across Black Ops 4, into Overwatch, which should be pretty amazing. PC players expect a lot of options. They like to customize their gameplay experience exactly how they want it. 
at Beanox, we have a long history of PC development. And so the PC community is always in the back of our minds. We're really talking about making sure that we've delivered on what they wanted. For the Black Ops games, we've always had dedicated servers, and this game is no exception. They provide the performance and the security that our PC players need. We are testing on the widest assortment of hardware possible to make sure the largest number of people can play and enjoy Black Ops 4. We really wanted to tighten up the gunplay mechanics and make the movement system feel as smooth and as responsive as it possibly can. There also has been a whole redesign of the UI flow, and we have made tweaks to how weapons react. Things like recoil, weapon knockback, so that for a keyboard and mouse player, it's easy to get back on target. We will have uncapped frame rate. We're going to support 4K, HDR, ultra-wide monitors. It's going to have great scalability options, so everybody will be able to optimize for visual fidelity. You've seen the team here get rejuvenated and excited by this idea of bringing the game to PC in a much bigger way than we've ever done before. Big round of applause. And I mean, I'm an FPS player with heart and soul, and I really can't wait to get, get, get my hands on, on Call of Duty Black Ops 4. And I mean, this game is specifically tailored towards the needs of PC gamers. And how do you approach a po project like this? Uh, oh. Great question for you guys, actually. Yeah, you <laughs> want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, I mean, What's exciting about this project this time is that we have an entire, uh, we have a studio, you know, back in Quebec dedicated to working on the PC version. Uh, and we've never had so many people working on it for the first time. What actually brings it, it allows Treyarch to be uh, working on, this is better, I guess? Yes. A bit better. Okay. So the idea is that it allows Treyarch to focus on creating that great game they're working on. But then at the same time, we can focus on delivering the PC experience that PC gamers want. Uh, and so it's constant communication between the two uh, studios, making sure that the work that we do uh, stays uh, in focus with what Treyarch is doing, but at the same time providing all the options that PC that the gamers want. Yeah, I mean, and, and also listening to the players. I mean, we got a lot of fantastic feedback during the open beta, and we expect to get even more during the blackout beta and really bring the players what they want. And I mean, we already heard in the trailer that PC gamers love to tailor their games towards their needs, like or towards their specific needs when it comes to like graphic options and of course in-game options like mouse sensi sensitivity and so on. And um, what features can PC gamers expect from this game? Well, you know, it, it, it's what you said. I mean, it is the uh, wide breadth of customizations. I mean, everything from the the controls and the mouse sensitivity and how they want to interact with the specialists to the, be able to um, tailor their, the system specs to meet their hardware, uh, everything from uh, you know, maximizing performance or maximizing fidelity to whatever suits their needs. Yes. So there's a lot of features. You know, we're talking about 4K, HDR. Uh, we're talking about supporting multiple uh, screens at the same time. Ultra widescreen monitors. I don't know if anybody's seen the game played on a 32 by 9 uh, inch screen, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, so these are all the features, the technical features that we want to support so that players can you know, play the way they like it. Now let's jump back to 2010. Someone telling you that in 2018 you will be introducing a game of this format. <laughs> like what goes through your mind? <laughs> it's, it's super exciting. We feel very privileged at Beanox to be working with these guys. I mean, uh, it, Black Ops has such a heritage, and I think like having this opportunity to bring it on Battle.net for the first time is great. It feels great. And I mean, it is Call of Duty's first year on Battle.net, and we've already heard Call of Duty is a landmark in computer gaming. Like, how proud does it one make? It, to hear it, something like that. Yeah, it, it's great. I mean, it, and working with Blizzard on, on the integration of Battle.net with the game has just been a fantastic experience. I mean, everything from just the dedication of the team there, being able to work with their uh, just amazing compatibility lab, be able to test on the widest breadth of hardware again, make sure that we're going to be bringing a great experience to all the players. And bringing all these pieces together is a really big deal because there's just a... There's an incredible amount of game to be played when the game launches on October 12th. Yeah. Uh, everything from our from multiplayer to our take on battle royale gameplay with Blackout, 
uh, to zombies, which is like the biggest zombies experience we've ever had on disc. So there's there's a lot of game to uh, to be optimized for PC, and you bring in another partner like Blizzard. There's just a lot of work to be done, and these guys have been doing it. Yes. I mean, let's let's take a tiny step back. Tell us what's the purpose of running a beta? What do you guys promised yourself from running a beta? You know, it, it really is the feedback. I mean, uh, I think. Uh, some people may think that it's you know it's it's just a marketing gimmick, but really the the data we're able to to pull out on um, weapon performance and spawn rates and uh, specialist balance, all of that is is extremely valuable. As well as the feedback, we're we're reading everything that comes across on on Reddit, on on Twitter. All of that feedback is brought back to the team and and will will be put into the next build. Well, and that's something that the studio has been working really hard on, especially during the multiplayer beta, and you can expect the same for us from the, uh, the blackout beta in September, uh, which is you know, really making sure that we're, we're listening to feeding back with, with the feedback that we're getting on Reddit, on Twitter, um, you know, and you know, keeping track along the way. You can kind of even see updates, modifications that are being made in real time. So all that is all that is being used to make for a better day one experience. So you're definitely listening to your players because you want them to enjoy the game. Yes, and I think we're having a conversation. I mean, I think there's a lot of back and forth with the, with the community during the betas, and I think you know, people saw that. that. That's amazing. And I think we've seen this in a video. I mean, it's important to listen to PC gamers in particular, well, to all gamers, but for PC gamers, it's the ability to customize the experience. Yeah. So one of our pillars was flexibility. So allow players to really be able to customize the game you know, the way they like it. And so that means listening to uh, the community to understand what they want and what they, what they expect from a PC game. To be honest, I had my professional career in a different FPS that I'm not going to mention right now. But I must admit, <laughs> even in this community, I heard a lot of positive feedback for Call of Duty Black Ops 4 for PC. So that's fantastic. And how did you guys receive it? I mean, uh, the, the, the feedback was, was both very positive and very constructive, which was, was very nice to see from the that's, Very constructive, it, exactly, yeah. that's, Very that's, constructive, very articulate feedback. It was, it was great. And yeah. like the volume, it, every, we could not have asked for a better kind of community response. So, awesome. so I already asked around. Uh, we had some people playing the beta before, right? How did you like it? Yes, it was yes. good. Was it nice? <laughs> right, that's that's great to hear. And um, I think, like the trailer right here, we saw it like on the side screens. Are these like players that you invited to your office to to play the game? Uh, most oh. of those were people working on the game. Oh, yes, yeah. okay. actively working while the cameras were, were panning past because there's a lot of work to be done. But how close do you work with the, uh, the community? Well, actually, this ties in, what we're looking at ties into the fact that uh, both teams, uh, both studios are playing the game a lot. Uh, you know, so we're constantly playing the game, constantly looking at how things are playing out, uh, you know, look, basically just looking at the things that we can potentially improve. And sometimes it's even hard to stop playing. Yeah. Well, was there something like a key fragment of the feedback you got, like the massive feedback you got that you took, took away, like something you you, you knew that you had to directly implement it to your game. Well, there's so much feedback coming in that, you know, Jonathan was talking about, like, you know, uh, just weapon balancing, okay. uh, sp you know, spawn rates or, like, spawn points, these sort of things that we know will eventually go into the experience. Score streaks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we, it's basically a lot of things that we're going to be working on until ship and, and even, you know, past the moment the game ships as well. Of course. And is there something currently sitting on uh, position one on your to-do list? Position one. There yeah. are multiple positions. Yeah. <laughs> <one. laughs> yeah. Like the highest possible priority you could tell us about. Uh, blackout beta. Blackout beta is next on the list. Absolutely. Um, and that is, you know, if you're a PC player, it's live for all on September 15th. So okay. that'll be out soon. Yes, so please join us. Yeah. And then it's a, it's a march toward October 12th. Yes. Uh, that's that's the list. <laughs> that's that's going to be a very exciting time for you guys, right? Uh, yeah, yes. so a lot to do. How, how does it feel to bring out a game like this? Like, I, I, I can, like I'm a very empathic person, <laughs> so I can, like... If I had hair, I wouldn't have hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that we've, we've often talked about is that, like, be, having the opportunity to make a Call of Duty game is, is pretty special because, you know, there are, there, it touches a lot of lives, and as a creative professional, yeah. It's an opportunity for your work to be seen by millions of people. Okay. Uh, so 
you know, everyone at Treyarch, at Phoenix, like they're, you know, they're going the distance to make sure that, you know, they do the absolute best work of their careers. And we have also new modes implemented in the game. Uh, it's, tell us something. it's entirely possible that you may see a boat in blackout, so <laughs> uh, prestige what worldwide. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Kelvin fill you in on that. All right, it's confirmed. <laughs> Gonna see it. And I mean, tell us, tell us about um, a mode people talked a lot about during the beta, heist. What's it, what's it about? Oh, heist. Uh, so I'm going to try to do my level best here, and hopefully Matt Schrantz will will approve. So at the beginning of a match, uh, you've got two teams that start off uh, opposite sides of the match, and you've got to make it to the middle to get this, this bag of cash, this loose bag from, from a heist. And you've got to take that bag, you've got to get it to the extraction zone, hook it up to a helicopter and get it out. Uh, round base, best of three, but along the way as you are able to sort of kind of essentially earn score, uh, you're earning money within this in-game economy that allows you to go into your own sort of heist uh, shopping center and pick up, you know, some new gear to rig you out for round after round. Great. It sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, we see the footage on stage, and how much fun does it make to uh, Well, people have had a great, great time with this. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, being involved in a heist in one way or another is on everybody's bucket list, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So uh, you know, people have had a really good time. A lot of great feedback during the beta. Okay, so another mode, a very popular mode, was uh, control. Sure. Uh, again, there's probably a small team of people that are like on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two teams opposite sides of the match or opposite sides of the map. Uh, one is tasked to attack. One is attack, uh, tasked to defend. Two areas. Again, round based. But the thing that really brings a new twist into control is that each team has a designated number of lives. Okay. So you kind of, there's this uh, decision making point into the, feet, into the gameplay loop again where you have to kind of stop and think about how you're going to approach the next spot. Okay, that's exciting. Yeah. I don't think that I actually saw it in the game just yet. Uh, I don't know if you'll see it pop up here in this video, but you know it gives you uh, it gives you pause to uh, consider your future as a bullet sponge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll just add to that sort of that ground-based tactical feel of the game. The, okay. the, the teams working of together. Course, yeah. Of course, because it's not, not about a single person; it's about the team, and I think that works on a team mechanic as well. Very but much. Actually, that's a that's a great point because you know one of the some of the design principles involved in multiplayer are really trying to provide, is providing a, a more tactical experience, but also a more team-based team experience that sort of inspires communication among team members. Right, but I think, no. do you want to add something to that? No, I, I agree. Okay, because, agree. because yeah. I'm very excited <laughs> stuff. right now, because I know what's coming next. We're allowed to show you the worldwide premiere of the PC trailer here on Gamescom yes. 2018. Ooh. And I would say, let's have a look. Let's yeah. check it out. That's worth one big round of applause, there you if you go. ask me. <laughs> so much 4K and USK yeah. safety all the time. Absolutely one time. stunning. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, and I really can't wait to see it myself. Yeah, it I is. Think. And on top of that, of course, there, you have all the gameplay features that you can play with, you know, okay. and, and, and your settings. So you can completely uh, play with the keyboard settings, play the, with the mouse sensitivity, adjust your field of view. Uh, you can play with how you want to play each specialist. So there are multiple options, multiple gameplay options you can play with to get it just the way you like it. Yeah, and hopefully everybody can check it out uh, this week at, at the uh, Aces booth. Yes. Okay, if so you know where to go at the weekend. I allow you one hour Jonathan, if, off. If one was so inclined to look at the go to the Aces booth, is there a new map that they would see? There is. 
Oh, what a surprise. What? <laughs> oh, uh, yes. We have the new Arsenal map playable for, at Gamescom for the first time. Yes. Oh, nice. So, guys, you know what to do. Go check it out. Get your hands on the game. Test it yourself and maybe get into the Vita on September the 15th. There you yes. go. And um, I'll do it as well. And I'll let you know my feedback. <laughs> I'm really excited to try myself. And um, But let's talk about the other mode of the game, zombies. You already mentioned it at, at the start of our conversation, if I'm not mistaken. You said something about zombies. So what is it about? Well, I mean, you, you kind of go back to sort of the 10-year journey. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, this is probably a, a good place to hit on that, too. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we were in San Diego at Comic-Con celebrating all things zombies, most especially the 10-year anniversary of zombies. OK. Uh, in 2008's World at War, uh, it appeared as an unlockable Easter egg and has blossomed from this standalone little experience to uh, what is nothing short of a complete lifestyle. Um, and this time for Black Ops 4, the zombies team is, the zombies team is bringing it. Uh, you've got three different uh, on-disc experiences. Uh, you've got Rick Tofen, Dempsey, Nikolai Takiao uh, making an appearance in, in Blood of the Dead. Uh, and then you have a cast of four new characters that are uh, making an appearance in two other stories, Nine and a sweet coming-of-age tale called Blood of the Dead which takes players to the Titanic. Uh, that's Voyage of Despair. Yes. What's that? Voyage, Voyage of Voyage. Despair. Oh, what did I say? It's the Blood of the Dam. Voy this yeah. is Voyage it's of fine. Despair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell I, you about my Voyage well, that's, of Despair. That's, that's, that's what yes. he said, right? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's yeah. exactly what he said. Thank yeah, you, guys. There you yes. go. <laughs> so, and another mode is, of course, Blackout. Yeah. The very first Battle Royale mode on Call of Duty. Tell us about it. Uh, well, I mean, if you're, uh, I think that some of the biggest things here is that, you know, Blackout brings to bear what is, you know, a long heritage of Black Ops history. Uh, so, you know, from Woods to Masons to the Specialists to some of the Zombies characters, you know, you're going to be able to come into Blackout and, and experience everything that Blackout has to offer and including, you know, maybe a boat along the way. <laughs> um, but you'll have vehicles, I mean, really, if it, we see an opportunity to bring something special to the Battle Royale space with all of the heritage that, that Black Ops offers. All right, that sounds really exciting. How did you get the idea of... How, how did it happen? How did it happen? <laughs> <laughs> Who's well, responsible that be, yeah. for that? <laughs> uh, you know, I think that... I think there were a lot of things that kind of came into play, uh, but we saw it as a, as a real creative opportunity. Again, like... We have so much to bring to bear to a black to a battle royale kind of experience that this was just really fertile ground for us to to kind of put our stamp on it. That's super exciting. And um, the blackout beta. Uh, the blackout beta. Uh, if you are a console player, you'll be able to play PlayStation first on September 10th. Uh, PC open to all by the 15th. That's super exciting. So guys, pull out your calendars and put it in there. You don't want to miss it. And I mean, well, it's just exciting to see a game develop over the course of how many years? Like how many years has Call of Duty been a part of our, of our gaming landmark? Yeah. Landscape, sorry. <laughs> what, what was your first Call of Duty games? Or what, were, what, what was the first Call of Duty game? It would have to be Call of Duty 2. Yeah. It was the first game, yeah. I've been playing since the first. All of them? Yeah. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 was my first Call of Duty game. So I've been playing for a while. How, how many years in total? Mm, technically, I think that's 13. 13 that's, uh, years, something around that. So over yeah. a decade of yeah. Call of Duty. Yeah. I mean, it's just we rarely see games survive that long in, a, in, in an environment like we have. Like games come and go, but Call of Duty stayed over the past 13, 14, 15 years, but how, how do you achieve that? Like, what goes into creating a game that like, lasts last that long? Uh, well, first and foremost, the fans that play it. Uh, you know, uh, the game with multiplayer zombies, the reality is that, um, you know, we wouldn't have the chance to do what we do if it, if it weren't for our community of fans. Uh, but also, it's, it's really like, you know, 
Call of Duty, and especially like even within the Black Ops series, there's been ample opportunity to kind of bring new things to the fold each game and continue to experiment with what what it means to play a Call of Duty game. And you know, there's a, that's another reason why you know you see something like Blackout and Black Ops Four, uh, because it is it is a very welcome opportunity to do something brand new. That's super exciting. I mean. That's the perfect closing for this panel. Because, I mean, I could ask you guys for, for hours about this game and what, what to expect from it. And I mean, we're going to try it ourselves on September 15th yes. yeah. for yes. the beta. Yep. And then it will be released on? October 12th. Yes. But we, if, if I may, we oh, probably course, couldn't close ahead. it out without saying thank you to everyone back at yes. the studio in Santa Monica and the team back at Binox yes, for everybody's hard work. Thank you, everyone. Well, and guys, thank you so much for coming. So big thank round you. of applause for John Raffas, Jonathan Moses from Triarch, and Thomas Wilson from Binox, who made all the way to Cologne. Thank you so much, guys. Thank This you. is your applause. Und ihr, ihr habt alle gehört, ihr könnt am Wochenende das Spiel selber ausprobieren. Ich hoffe, ihr macht das auch fleißig. Danach kommt ihr aber sofort. to my team at Boom Laboratories. Apply now. Welcome to Blizzard at Gamescom 2018, everybody. Oh, we are in the Hearthstone Tavern. Ho oh, ho, pull up a chair. Is that the innkeeper that is the I innkeeper. hear? Oh yeah. my god. I, you did really I, good I job. auditioned. They never went with me in the end. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, you nailed it right off the Thank bat. You. I'm Thank excited you. for today. We have a ton of stuff we've to talk about. We've got so much stuff. In fact, just the whole week. This week, we've got the dance contest. Always a good one. We've got the cosplay contest, which is fantastic one of But your favorites definitely up there but as we now know on friday we got the warbringers ashara piece yes premiering live on this stream i cannot wait yeah so be sure to tune in on friday now of course if you're here at gamescom the blizzard booth has ton of new blizzard content um if we're just talking starcraft 2 we've got the new co-op commander tychus who yeah, i got it's about time man you're just full exactly of they didn't go with me on him either actually. <laughs> well we of course have him and uh we also have the new expansion for WoW. So if you guys haven't checked out Battle for Azeroth, you can come check it out here at the booth. And we even have Overwatch, the new boost on map, which just got revealed today, so everyone's going to want to play that. And But if not, you can play Lucio Ball, which is the new summer game event. Which we are both 
really good at. Really honestly. good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Heroes of the Storm, they've got the Hanamura rework, is exclusively playable here at Gamescom. Obviously, Boomsday Project is out. Puzzle Labs came out last night. I've been playing them all day. And Practicing. I, well, <laughs> I've, I've cleared like four of the puzzles. I'm terrible. You have to use your brain. I don't like that. It's like going to be interesting to see how you do. Well, that's right, because <laughs> later on I'm going to be facing off against Tice, the two-time European Hearthstone champion. Uh, he's going to help me build a deck and then humiliate me with a pre-made Whiz Bang, the wonderful deck. I so have we'll confidence see. in you. Obviously, one final thing we do have playable here is Diablo 3 on Switch. Yes. It's finally happened. I know. I'm Everybody's excited. excited for that. Actually, um, there's also the Video Games Live event, which is coming soon. Uh, that, for me, is a first. So I'm very excited to see that. I've heard so many great things about VGL. They are so good. Uh, it genuinely is way better than any of my headphones or speakers. I've never heard the sounds in games sound as good as they do when they're played by those guys. I cannot wait to You see also it. Uh, got a chance to sit down with K.O. Milka, didn't you? I and did, learn yes. learn all about the newest addition to Heroes of the Storm. That's right. Um, the Lord of Hatred himself, Mephisto, we got to hear, well, I got to speak to K.O. all about his new abilities and, of course, everything that's new to Heroes of the Storm and the Hanamura map, so you're going to find out more about that very soon. Um, but yeah, we all saw today the D.Va animated short. Yeah. I got very verklempt. I was very emotional watching that. Yeah. What about you? Uh, <laughs> it ticked all the boxes for me. There was there's some fantastic sort of action moments. You know, everything was oh, bang. Pop. Yeah, but we don't want to spoil too no, much, of course. No. So we're going to have that for you coming up on the live show. And uh, right now we're going to go to you competing, yeah, going I'm off against go Tice. Go play against Tice. Uh, Best of luck. If you need anything, I'll be... I think I'm going to need more than luck. Okay. I'll, I'll be uh, cheering you on okay, on the sidelines. Cool. If you could get me, um, I don't know, if you could accidentally like spill a drink on his keyboard. Oh, yeah. I'll bring you some help. water. I might win. Yeah, bring yeah, some yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be good. <laughs> Hi there. My favorite moment from last year's HGG was when Amnesiac wearing all American clothing at the finals. When New Zealand beat Australia. When the Philippines beat Germany. Well played! What's my favorite number? 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Pasta? Yeah, definitely 30. And the pizza. My 30 favorite card? That's too much. You what, mate? 30 cards right now? I have to play. The global games are all about national pride, team spirit, cheering for Germany, great community of friends and family. For your winners, Czech Republic. This year, Czech Republic doesn't stand a chance against Sweden. They don't even stand a chance. Spain has a really good chance to beat them this time. What makes the US such great Hearthstone players? Playing smart. French players love to play different decks. What does Belgian Earthen players have in common? Pride. Hey there, I'm Dr. Boom. I live to build things. We live bombs mostly. So come work with me and we'll create all kinds of new inventions. We live bombs mostly. Science! You can go into success with no regrets when you work with God. Mechanical pneumatic gorilla robot arms for smashing everything. Come add your skills to my team at Boom Laboratories. We're exploding with opportunity. Dr. Boom is not responsible for severed, exploded, or lost body parts. Revealing location of semi secret lab is punishable by death. Apply now. Welcome back to Blizzard at Gamescom. I'm joined by Tice. You are the two-time European Hearthstone champion. 
And what's more, you're a personal hero of mine. Yeah. I'm excited to, to actually sit down with, you're not a legendary <laughs> card, but you're a legendary Hearthstone player. Aww. And so <laughs> I'm bigging you up because I want mm -hmm. you to go easy on me later because what we're going to do now ah, so, oh, is, okay, okay, this, is, okay. this is my tactic at least. Uh, so we are going to construct a deck in the mm -hmm. Boomsday Project um, and then uh, we're going to have a little friendly duel uh, with said deck, uh, and you are going to play with a whiz bang, the wonderful. Oh, deck. but they, they, these decks are good too, they man. They are pretty good. They are. So, uh, in fact, I mm -hmm. should establish that they are really competitive, and thusly, if I lose to the two time European champion, mm -hmm. I'm still probably I'm up there. I'm up there, definitely. I may be like a one time mm -hmm. European champion. Got that skill potential. Give it a try. Oh, uh, Give it maybe. a try, well, maybe. After today, we'll mm -hmm. see. So, so building decks in Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. um, how how many decks do you build, let's say, in a week? Well, I am when the new expansion hits, um, it's like you can put a lot of creativity in the deck building and I make like three decks a day. Uh, so that's like twenty one decks a almost a week if I stream fully. See, already that math that's but coming into play in this game. <laughs> but when uh, when an expansion settles a little bit more down I start to more focus on what uh, because I like to create, uh, create decks, but I also like to win. So yeah. <laughs> it has to win too, and then uh, it starts to just come down to one or two decks a day so very so often. So what are you seeing in the meta at the moment? What is the most prevalent sort of decks out there? And then what are the counters? Um, now with the Booms Day, um, Druid has de definitely was already popular, but has even risen up a little bit more. So it's the meta. Druid is not like overwhelming, but it's the meta is a bit made, made around it. Some decks are just having a little bit of a hard time with Druid in the meta. Um, but also a lot of uh, more anti-aggro techs now with uh, the Boomsday. We have the Giggling Inventor. What po probably a lot of people already cannot hear anymore with all the Anoyotrons. So all the time. So uh, there is already a lot of uh, switching, but it's really early meta now. It's, it shifts still day by day a little bit. Um, but it's uh, it's very mid rangey very mid rangey control. And and do you do you excel in that sort of archetype, or are you are you more of an aggro guy, more of a control guy? What would you? This is definitely one of my metas. Like I've been enjoying Hearthstone a lot over the past half a year. A year. Uh, before that, I had to sometimes play uncomfortable decks a bit for me uh, that were very aggressive. But now I can, yeah, like I play the control mirrors, and I I just feel at my at my plays at my home. It's like complete value town sometimes. So I just make the most greediest play I can make. My decks very greedy. I love it. Have you tried <laughs> APM Priest yet? I tried it a little yeah. bit, but that's a deck that sometimes so stresses tough. me out too. So <laughs> it's, it's not that easy, man. It's tough. Dog makes it look so easy, but it, it, yeah. it really isn't. It's, it's <laughs> like if you practice, like you just, just have to practice it 10 times. It's going, going completely wrong, but when you have the first combo a little bit settled down, you can kind of do the first piece of it a little autopilot. Yeah, maybe. So maybe, maybe you can. 10 times. 10 times. 10 times. Okay. Terps, give it a I try. Might, I'll do it 20 times, <laughs> and then maybe. <laughs> or maybe. I've been finding with uh, Puzzle Labs came out last night, and... Um, yeah, they're mm -hmm. they're tough. Some of them. How far did you get? So I've actually I've cleared the I've cleared all bar the uh, board control uh, ones. So I just need to do board control and then I've done. Oh wow, that's there. already very yeah. fast and far. Yeah, I've been doing it all day though. Uh, <laughs> just, just <laughs> I have been doing I've been doing it also all day okay, today. Okay, so okay, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to load up the collection, let's let's just dive in. Is it on this one? Is it? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be clicking. Oh. Yeah. Oh, already, I feel yeah, it's your deck, done. right? I know. I oh, know. you have to delete a deck of me Do first, I? though. Okay, which one are you most proud of? Oh, uh, the the bottom one. Yeah, this one. Can I yeah. do this? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay, it's gone. It was the worst one. one. It was my worst one. Yeah, it's mine. Oh, hang on, hang on. Where's the crafting? Here we go. Oh my! No, 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 no. <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay, right. New deck. Right. Firstly, hero. Obviously, there's there's nine. What are you looking for? I mean, so I I like playing more. I play a lot of mage and paladin. Uh, okay. I think uh, warlock, obviously, with mecha Jaraxxus is mm -hmm. quite tempting, just because he's got all new emotes, uh, and that is a very mm -hmm. important part of the game. Um, but I don't know. I'm open. You, I want you to to shout. And do you want to like have a lot of uh, more uh, new Boomsday inclusions? I do you look for? I think that'll be good. Yeah. Like uh, there is a lot of more Mech Paladin mid rangey deck that okay. you might like a lot. Well, this is pretty new. Okay. Um, well, let's let's try that then. That's good. We'll go with Paladin. We've got Arthur's unlocked. Well uh -huh. done. Yeah. Come on. You gotta. You have to get the Winston. Okay. And we we'll just click on. No, no. We'll go with custom deck. No, don't let. Don't go with these. Yeah, exactly. uh, <laughs> well, that's what you're gonna get when you have Whizbang. Isn't it? He's gonna give you one of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, what are we looking for then with a, a, a mid range mech paladin? So, as if we look at uh, what has been revealed for paladin out of this expansion, we can like start here with typing okay. mech. Uh, there, this is the new legendary spell for the paladin, Kengars, and it's a super strong spell where you resurrect 
three mechs. Mm -hmm. But if you magnetic them, they get both. They get bonuses in the resurrecting. Right. So it's an, uh, a very strong card. So that's definitely something that you you wanna have and build your deck a bit around. Putting some of the good ones in. Uh, so their meta has been also a lot with eggs around. Um, it's very hard to deal with it because um, yeah, the Hearthstone it doesn't have that much silence. So. The best way is probably to go a little bit with max, um, at least the good mech parts of it. Right, okay. So this card can maybe fit in here. I've been fighting him a lot in puzzle apps. That, that one fight with And the cool thing is you can, for example, also play so a meat wagon. wagon. Exactly. Fantastic for pulling out uh, some And it's a mech. Yes. And it puts out the egg. So and we can magnetic it and maybe pull something out. I not want to do that. Um, it can be. Yeah, it's not a, a normal. Magnetic and meat wagon. You okay. want to let the meat wagon die, and then you want what comes out. Uh, Does it ever mess up our kangles? Yes, a little bit, but okay. as long as you, it should normally be fine. Like it's very. You might also want to play giggling inventor, and then you have annoyotrons. But yeah, it messes also a little. Right, bit up. I see yeah, exactly. I'm just going to so get those So Zilliax, you just put in there. Zilliax uh, is definitely a card you want to put in is, there. Zilliax is phenomenal, and you've gone. Did you unpack that? Did you oh, that? Do you know when I opened my Hearthstone Clive, when Boomsday okay. opened? Yeah. We all get a, if you pre order, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, a golden got legendary. Golden and Zilliax. I got the Zilliax. Oh, so what? I was a lucky, a lucky one. That's, oh, that is very lucky. That Look. is, I feel a little bit. <laughs> I didn't get a Zilliax. And now, so this is like, I think, the package you should go for, so but it's like very let's, on the mech let's side. Let's just go back through there. So, what we got? We've got, so Glowtron is a 1 3 magnetic mech. It's one of like. Just Best super cards. solid, exactly. A stat line at one mana. We've got one attack, three health, and magnetic, and mech. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really like one of the best cards revealed out really of the Really, really powerful. And then we've got uh, Bronze Gatekeeper. So mm -hmm. just a nice uh, torn. And now are we using this more as a magnetic card than a, you know. In Paladin, there is not that, like, it's very important that you have magnetic when you want to go on the egg, and mm -hmm. it just stacks up. It's also sometimes it's just an... Like a, a plus one, plus five in attack way, you can use it as a charge even, or okay. as an extra trade okay. way. But I will definitely fill the deck now with very solid Paladin cards, and okay. that should be something maybe you you also can know a little bit about. Okay, well, uh, probably not, but we'll see. We'll just keep going through. So Anoya mm -hmm. module uh, is uh, basically a, a more powerful uh, Anoyatron with Magnetic, uh, I guess. Yeah, and Magnetic Divine Shield is very good. Like, if you compare this to Blessing of Kings, what well, is yep. a very s p card that has been in Hearthstone for a long time, this is kind of, in a way, a, a Blessing of Kings, but it can also just be a 4-mana 2-4, what is fine. And it gives Divine Shield, in a way. Yeah, which so is great for trading. It's a way more flexible uh, Blessing of Kings and just a bit quite better. Okay, and so the Meat Wagon we already established is going to be mm -hmm. great for pulling out the eggs. Uh, yes. So the Egg Death Rattle is an 8-8 Robosaur. One thing to be a little bit maybe care of is if you buff the Meat Wagon too much, yeah. it can buff other things than the Egg. It suddenly yeah, it's going to start pulling out uh, you know, like uh, annoying modules. Yeah, or, or a Bronze okay. Gatekeeper, or okay. a Goliathron, or okay. whatever you put in the deck. I see, I see. So we don't really want to do that. Uh, Giggling Inventor, obviously. So this is going to spawn two uh, Anoyatrons with it. Yes. And so Kangors could pull those. Yes, so there is a little bit of thinking uh, sometimes where you need, in the matchups where you need the value a lot of like getting, then you just don't play this card maybe. Okay, okay. But uh, he's so strong that <laughs> you even in this deck probably want to have at least one. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And then War Gear, obviously a 5 mana 5-5 five five magnetic is basically Kings uh, or a mech. A or a 5 <laughs> mana 5-5 five five yeah, if yeah. you have nothing on board. That's so the strong part about these cards. Yeah. It's in the worst case, it's still a solid minion instead yeah. of a card you kind of can't play because yeah, you're it's a spell. waiting for your body to exactly put a spell on. Mm -hmm. uh, so then Zilliax is, uh, I guess, what we hope we get back uh, from from uh, Kangors along with... And the best is that if you have it already on yeah, something. Yeah, like with a war gear on the top of it or something like that, that life still would be very nice. Uh, so that's our mech package. And mm -hmm. we, we're not going to add any more mechs at this point now. We're just you looking at... You can maybe have like a little bit flex spots where you put in some more mechs, but it also weakens the deck a bit in your uh, Kangor's way that it probably are the main... They are getting very weak. Okay. You want mainly be focused on the magnetic, I think. Okay. So let's go through and have a look at the Paladin cards. Uh, we've got plenty of time, so we can dive in a bit deeper mm -hmm. in some of these choices. Uh, so what are we going to add next? So what is very powerful about Paladin is 
the basic core of the how much how cheap it can be to have very good clears in Paladin. Mm -hmm. Paladin has uh, with equality probably one of the cheapest and best cars to put your opponent so low on uh, on the board. Um, Consecration, I think, is just one of the best. Also a very strong card. Uh, and that combination together, it works also great. So I think that is... These so are the cards you directly look okay, at. Okay, so there we go. The quality. Golden, obviously. Uh, two or one? What do you think? I will go one? two with equality. Two, two equalities. Do you want to? And then uh, Consecrate. Uh, I've gone past it. Uh, consecration. Uh, two. Yeah, yeah, I will say okay. two. So two of those. And that's pretty good. Consecration, obviously, because it hits also the enemy hero mm -hmm. if they've got taunts in the way and are on low health. It's a potential win condition, occasionally. Um, right, what else do you think we're looking for? I think if you play with a lot of these mechs and the eggs on four and, and the meat wagons on... or the meat on four, meat wagon on four and the egg on five, it can be very nice to have maybe in Spiker Steed um, okay. as a uh, six drop. So but six, yeah. It's an, uh, you get a lot of stat lines for this. Um, so it's a very nice card, and the Kitnar card next to the Steed is probably one of the best out of the earlier okay. expansions revealed, Tarim. Tarim, obviously Tarim is, is, is spectacular. Uh, so if we spike his Steed, one of our mechs, and Kangor brings it back, it keeps the buff? No. Or it's just it the magnetic it's editions? It's just the magnetic okay. editions. Okay. So I will probably maybe just say go it as a one-off if you... Okay, so we we'll go for one spike Ridge Steed uh, and Tarim. Yeah, I will say Tarim is Tarim's so very great strong. in terms of it's almost like a mini-ish um, equality at times. Like if you've got something on the board, or an uh, aggressive yeah. one, so it can be used yeah. very aggressive yeah, to buff too. your board up, especially uh, with uh, Eden uh, Paladin. So let's or look at the curve because right. that's something that you sometimes should look at too. If you go so to the top, right, then okay. you are like, where is the where is there maybe a little bit space we need something? I see, I see. This is good. This is good deck building <laughs> advice here because normally all I do is uh, control V. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just I just paste control it. Control C, Control yeah, exactly. V. That's that's the way I like to build my decks. Uh, I've played a few of yours. They've been okay, okay from time yeah. to time. Sometimes put some nice you recipes out there. <laughs> <laughs> I look at you and I think, oh, oh, that's uh, he's a good chef when it comes to baking up some wins. Yeah. Um, so we're looking now uh, on the uh, so we're, yeah we're looking a bit light on uh, three mana. Yes. So what three mana are we again? We're sticking class cards. Um, we can so Peacekeeper? We can stick to Cloud Scars and Peacekeeper is a great card. So yeah. I will definitely say that's a very good card to put in as a two up. And two of those. Um, and probably I would say uh, Stone Hill Defender is a card in Paladin uh, because of all the very good legend uh, taunts you have yeah. in Paladin. Yeah, because uh, you you're more likely to pull class cards yes. from Discovers. Uh, so, so very often it's just in three mana that can give you an uh, Tarim, give you is an it, Oh, it is three, isn't it? That's why I'm looking the wrong bit. <laughs> Uh, here we go. And uh, I think the three mana slot is for Paladin very important. Um, if you are have a very weak turn on turn three as a Paladin, you fall very behind. Okay, so just the one or two? I would say two. Two. And then you have like at least quite some good part in the early game. Okay. So now you can make a little bit decision what you want to make out of this Paladin. Do you want to maybe have it as a control, and then you can maybe consider Doomsayers. Do you want to have loot okay. orders to add additional draw? You, okay. can, uh, you can even think of Call to Arms if you want, uh, for example. So Call to Arms, what do you pull out of this? Because Call to Arms now... Well, not much yet, but yeah. if you will put in Rightness Protectors and loot holders and maybe another two drop, then it's suddenly... Suddenly it's got uh, something it can pull out. Then, then you got a little bit more of a proactive mid-range active deck, I think. Okay. But you can also take a well, more control again, approach. With a view that I'm going up against... Probably, let's say hypothetically, a Whizbang deck. Uh, you know, obviously, there's a variety of different decks, but they chiefly are mid range control. Yes. What do you reckon we should put in for, for best opportunity of beating whomever we were to well go? Up but they, they, are, they are very different from each other, the Whizbang okay. decks sometimes. Some are very reactive, some are okay. very proactive. Mm, I think also um, maybe True Silver is still a very good card to add in. Yep. If we don't want to. Because I think it's also a little bit costly if you put too many early cards in. But I think you are, you are passing now too much on two because you don't even have a two drop. And I mean, hero powering is not bad for Paladin, but no. it, I think card draw can be a little bit of an issue in this deck. So what would you look at for... Uh, so there is a new card, Crystology Revealed, what some people also use as a one-off. Okay. It's something you can consider oh, because... Two one-attack minions, so that would be uh, potentially Bronze Gatekeeper. Could be a meat wagon. Uh, yeah. Could be 
Stone Hill. So Stone it's, Hill. it's very yeah. often three mana, four mana, what you also can get out of it. It's not bad for two mana, is it? So it's not a card you want to probably play as a two of. That might be a bit too much. Yeah, but just yeah. as a one of having some draws. Looks really nice though as well. Really pretty. Yeah. I like the artwork. And it's that. a new card. So yeah, exactly. Let's like put a that bit, new bit card of new in. in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we've got four last slots. Uh, we're looking you know, pretty, pretty nice and even. Uh, do you think we need any more late game? Mm. Do you think we're sorted? Like normally, Max can do very, very strong in the late game. You can add an uh, like that's the great thing about Stone of the Vendor too. You can like pick a little bit towards late game. You mm -hmm. can put in one more. You can put in a. Uh, a Tyrion. A Tyrion. Like it's, it's something that, I, like, one more greedy card is fine. But I like Tyrion just purely because, obviously, of his entrance music. You know, that, yeah. you know, you know that's, that gets the me fired The fade with it up. in the light. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Put your fade yeah. in the light. Exactly. That's all I want. That's all I want from a card is just to be it's inspired. Also, it's also very important. I say that so often that people go with cards they, they like to play with or also go with decks because that's the decks you're the best with. You're the best with the decks that you enjoy playing and also that you have been playing with. I guess so. Yeah, and you, I think once you've got your kind of head around uh, win conditions and, you know, kind of when you want to play cards, where you get the most value from those cards, I think that's the thing looking at this is where I might come unstuck is is not getting mm. the right magnetic stick on the right thing. So that's something where well, I'm... Play it on the left. Fine. Play it on the left. Well, I know, yeah, yeah, to get the... yeah. <laughs> that's like that's step the, one. That's the dream. <laughs> Follow the animation. Um, okay, so we have three slots left. Um, so maybe you're thinking some two drops, or are we looking at uh, a couple more mid rangey stuff? Or maybe even some, some like early stuff. Like, would secrets mess you up? Yeah, secrets are a little too weak, I think, you to think? play on themselves. Yeah, it doesn't do. You can maybe add like one more mech. You can add another true silver still, is also yeah. kind of okay. Go for another true silver, and then for a mech, have you got anything you think of? Like, oh, if I could type properly, that would help. So all the good so ones are already the there. <laughs> ones. Uh, Goblin bomb, not Goblin really bomb is kind of weak. Uh, Galvanizer, I don't really need to. They're, they're quite the cheap cheapness to begin is with. not the problem. Uh, let's see. I think a little bit later, somewhere at four or five, you might wanna. Okay, so an explodinator. It can be okay because it, it can also <laughs> work with Terran that your yeah. bombs suddenly become like. Oh, a that'd three be good. Three. Yeah, you get two, three, threes. Um, or we've got double the damage and healing of my hero power. So those one ones, they would probably come in and say four <laughs> arms men <laughs> or something like that. Uh, what What are you feeling? Let's see. What do we have? Uh, Rusty recycler. So this can also still work a, gr a little bit. Uh, it's a yeah. little greedy. It's just like another egg that can be very powerful. Um, I think even another giggling inventor can work. Okay. So that can be something. So we've got one more spot left, and then we've got we to play each other. Have you got an account yeah. logged in? Are you ready to play? Well, this is my account, so, so I'm not sure what... Yeah. Uh <laughs> We're going to have to see how, uh, how we play each other. It might be that we just queue in, and you can just advise me on how to... Valonir can also be a very good card, uh, together yeah. with like some mechs and with Rush, too, um, if you have like ways to get Rush in. So Valonir can be a cool card, if you like that weapon, if yeah, you are yeah. a weapon fan. I mean, well, I do like weapons. We've got, obviously, two uh, True Silvers already, but... As long as you're not playing not Uther, bad. I think it's fine. If yeah. you play Uther and True tru Silvers and then Valonir, that's yeah. a it's little too many bit weapons. too much. Too many weapons. You yeah. might as well play a warrior. Come on. Pick your class. <laughs> Stick with it. Um, okay. So we do that. Uh, and then oh, we're going to name this. i just call it Gamescom. Uh, oh, Gamescom. Boop. Uh, there we go. And that is done. Right. So I don't think we can actually play each other on the same account, can we? I don't think so either. Uh, I don't no, think we've got another one set up. a little complicated. But somebody should have maybe yeah. an account and get, can give so me a whisk on Do you want to play on my phone? If you have an... Uh Let's do it. Let's do it. We're, we're, we're going to do this super professional. Uh, I'll just go from here. True Hearthstone right. player has Hearthstone on the phone. That's yeah. awesome. You can add yourself on there. Oh, on the battle net. Yeah, ah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Let's do it. And while you've got that phone, if you do want to have a look at some of the puzzle labs and maybe solve a few, that's oh fine. All right. I won't uh, tell sure, anyone. Sure. No one will know. The APM priest one is probably a little annoying, right? Which one? The APM priest. Uh, puzzles. Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. We want to just. 
Uh, add yourself on there. Cool. I can accept on here, and then it's all on, though. Here we go. All right. Come through here. Ah, look That's at me. that one. Uh, how do I accept on here? Uh, at the top. At the top, is it? And then at friends oh, request, and then go look. All <laughs> the way. I try and find me. <laughs> Very popular, Tice. Here we go. Tick. There we go. Right. It's on. All right. You challenge me. If you go so do you have a whiz band I do ready? have a whiz band deck. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've been practicing. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, you just do it on there. There we are. Okay. Standard jewel. Okay, it's on. Here All we go. All right. No pressure, okay? No pressure, huh? Ah, the whiz boy. The whiz okay, boy. Yeah, you know straight away. <laughs> the okay. whiz boy. Oh. Here we go. Okay. There are some. There, are, I have some preferences. Let's see what class we are getting. Yeah, here. that's thing. It's always, it's always interesting because obviously you, you, you don't know. know what you're queuing into either. So here you go, priest. Priest. Oh, this could be a bit uh, uh, APME. Let's see. Okay, now we're using the honor system here. You're not allowed to look up at the screen. No, I know. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna play it fair. I'm gonna give you an. Oh, I have a, such a sick opener. Okay. I'm not making you uncomfortable yet. So it's hashtag fine. Terps or <laughs> hashtag Tice, people can vote on in the chat and they can say who they think is going to win. Okay. Now, I don't think there's a prize, sadly, but I think that I am quite fragile uh, and would appreciate people is picking me. Yeah, I think that's fair. No? Okay, that's fine. Okay, well straight away. Wow. Whoa. Straight in already. Yeah. It's just, just ready to go. Cal Caleric on one. Okay. I've got nothing. I got nothing. And I'm not going to put a dude down, coin him out. You just heal up, you get more cards. That's not helping anyone. I am going in, oh. Terps. Uh, let me think. This is not do good. We do it there. Oh, what's this about? Okay. So I think I just need to see what we can get. Oh. Just don't know. I'm going to do with this. Okay, we'll see. What okay, is I need a lot more hashtag Terps in chat. I think there's just a lot of Fs in chat right now. People pay respects to my impending loss mm. already at turn three. I think I'm going in a little bit here. Oh, wow. You ready to go already? <laughs> is this? Oh, no, extra arms. And then you're getting more arms. Oh my lord, look at this. What's happened here? Okay. Um, let's see, what do I want to take? I guess. I like this deck. I'm going to do this. <laughs> well, it, all it shows is just that Whizbang's a better deck builder than you if you win. Like, I would think, if anything, you'd want me to win just to prove how good you are at building decks. But oh, more arms? You don't need any more arms. You've got yeah, enough arms. I don't see my arms yet. This guy's oh, there, got there like arms two go. arms, even more arms. This one's got arms. It's a little bit. Uh, okay. There we go. Play it there. Belly healing. I'll get you draw a card as well. There okay. we go. Right. This is. When you need that equality soon. Yeah, I do. I don't have it. Okay, that helps a lot already. Mm -hmm. But I had a very aggressive opener. Yeah, yeah, it's not looking good. I've got some cards that can hopefully slow things down a bit. Um, and we just have to see if I can manage to uh, claw it back. Hmm, this turn is slightly awkward. This is fine. Okay. Works as well. Another Yeti. Okay. Right. Here we go. <laughs> ah! Right, apparently. And 60% of people out there have picked you already. Uh, yeah. That's 44. That's, that's like that's very split. That's not. That's 60-40. That's that's assuredly in your <laughs> favor. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's get some cards. Oh, no. Vera. Where do we do it on? Might actually do it here. Double trading. Hmm. Okay. Where do I play my Divine Spirit? This is very much like out of Puzzle Labs right now. This is what it feels like. Well, with Anoyotron on the board, there's always a little puzzle. Okay, wow. Here we go. Really, really putting all your eggs in one basket there. Mm. 
Oh, people are people are coming back now. People are thinking that I'm going to win. I feel like they've they've oh, all made a no. terrible mistake. Okay. Well, if you have an equality, I, I, I can I don't. Be. I, I have don't. A, I have a little refill, but I'm just trying to think of what can I do against this 10-9. Um, I think. I'm going to do this. That seems pretty decent. And I'm just trying to think of. I think I just need 10-9. And I deal with. Oh, oh, oh. Not even 10-9. And we're just going to go with that. Hmm. I, just I hope you can't get through 6-5. So like got six, I think five, I'm uh, six seven even. It's all hard to play the Shadow Visions when you don't know what's in your deck. No, exactly. <laughs> and that's, the, that's the interesting thing. Cause you Normally I know what's in my deck, for. but now I'm yeah. like, I actually don't know. Okay, let's have a look. You've got a huge amount of value having this, uh, this Radiant Elemental on the board uh, for so long. Just discounting all your spells. Look at that. Another free card. Free card draw. Is someone injured? Oh. You get the draw from the Cleric as well on the hill. This is... This is not looking Let's start with a draw. Let's okay, let's see what you get. It's like the equivalent of tapping first. Here we go. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. I have a Murloc in the deck. Yeah, here we go. A Murloc in essence, isn't it? Let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see what you got on the board. You've got 14 damage on the board. I'm on 13. I need to put a taunt up. Uh, I'm going to go with that oh and this and that and just go face because I think I'm I don't think there's much coming back from this but another divine shield there's divine shields just slow you down that 10 doesn't matter it could be a, could be a thousand doesn't matter when you're hitting that divine shield hmm <laughs> You have good. You, I made your deck, so you. Yeah, have yeah, exactly. I got you great have cards. you have good cards, so really I'm gonna fast steal. Some really good. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Now you have good cards. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. That want was to my happen. plan all along. Is that what that it was? That was my plan all along. Ah uh, no, we See. don't do that. We don't do that either. We gotta do this right. It's just too good. Okay, here we go. Shadow my. Oh no! Oh my own dude, A2 Brute. Does it actually does this actually work if I do this? Do I then get a one one oh a year look <laughs> with charge as well. <laughs> <laughs> charge. <laughs> there we go. Do you keep the two one? I think you do at the end of this turn or do uh, I get both? No, you get it back. Oh but uh, you it get it back. You get it back. Yeah, I won't because you killed me. Uh, oh. so there we go. Fantastic. We well it turns out, Tyus, you're not that good at building decks, uh, evidently. Because I'm Or maybe I'm just a very de reasonable player. Well, you, you I think uh, people always say you're like at Hearthstone it's also important you play very well. I thank you. Did I? Did <laughs> I play well? Yeah, overall. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. You so did. I, uh, the you cards did. I just didn't have the no. cards at the end of the day. Yeah, but a priest uh, against Paladin is always a little hard for Paladin. Like um, with my clerics, you already get a little bit wrecked at turn one if you don't have a Doomsayer. Exactly. Or and we so didn't put Doomsayer in the deck. And I have to say, I'm a little bit uh, of a good opener, but uh, I didn't. Right. It was pretty good opener. You did, you did I played well. a Miracle Priest and it was very Miracle from the start on. So there you so. go. So Whizbang was one card. So that was 1,600 dust. 1,600 and dust and you can get 18 decks. And yeah. even people, I mean, people at the top legend ranks are sometimes trolling with it. But yeah. there have been people playing just for the fun. Top 10 in legend playing Whizbang and just stop winning games there with it. Go. Well, there you go. Well, thank you very much, Tyson, yeah. for beating me in front of all of our We're going to do another match. Uh, we will off-air, definitely. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we will be back shortly. Oh, hi there. My favourite moment from last year's HGG was when Amnesiac wearing all-American clothing at the finals. When New Zealand beat Australia... When the Philippines beat Germany. Well played! What's my favorite number? 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Pasta? <laughs> yeah, definitely 30. And the pizza. My 30 favorite card? That's too much. You what, mate? 30 cards right now? I have to play. The global games are all about national pride. Team spirit. Cheering for Germany. Great community of friends and family. For your winners, Czech Republic. This year, Czech Republic doesn't stand a chance against Sweden. They don't even stand a chance. 
Spain has a really good chance to beat them this time. What makes the U.S. such great Hearthstone players? Playing smart. French players love to play different decks. What does Belgian Earthen players have in common? Price. And we're live here at the Blizzard main stage. I can't believe it. Video Games Live is about to perform right behind us. It, it's always a highlight of these shows. Uh, we actually got to see them rehearse this morning. We did. And uh, there's some new songs. Some, so if you've seen previous years, you've got some new treats in store. Uh, we also uh, had a little go at conducting We ourselves. did. I think I did pretty good. My conducting I skills know I were did amazing. on I, point. <laughs> you, you were good. I was amazing. Um, I've seen, like, Russell's, Russell Brown is in. Uh, he's a fantastic conductor, has conducted previously, and uh, he didn't actually see my conducting, but I know that if he had, he would have been really impressed. It and it would have yeah. changed the game for the entire thing. I think so. Yeah. I think, you know, music is an inspiration, uh, and I feel like, you know, how can someone play their best if they're not inspired? And so I'm trying to inspire them with Bring moving the my hands around. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of passion. You guys are going to get to see a little bit of a clip of that, of us Hopefully. conducting. Hopefully. Hopefully. You can let us know in the chat, actually, who do you think conducted better? Yeah. Who conducted themselves with more professional music? Skills. <laughs> music skills, yes. You're, you, you're skills. actually good at music and stuff, aren't you? Yeah, I actually did study music in college. Okay. Um, jazz vocals was okay. my... So I did a bit of theory, a bit of ear training, a bit of the, the real legit music training that okay. you would normally my, get. My music skills are more from the streets. Oh, right. So, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of rap battles. Oh, really? Stuff like that, yeah. yeah That's amazing. Outside my local kind of primary school, you know, just kind of kindergarten like age. Free, like freestyling? Yeah, yeah freestyle, and... you know, a wow. little bit of that. It, it depends. Some of the younger kids, you've got to be careful because they, they haven't learnt manners at that point. They can be quite hurtful with some of the things they say in rap. Right, So right. you've got to really have, you know, some some good self-defense there. Well, They can I'm, be quite mean, is right. what I'm saying. Yeah, kids definitely. Are, kids are cruel. Kids can be cruel sometimes. Um, so what are some of your favorite tracks that you're uh, expecting to hear? Well, I like the Hearthstone music. Of it course. always reminds me of enjoying Hearthstone with friends and stuff. Um, but very memorable, very, yeah. Exactly, but being a nostalgia. huge, huge uh, kind of Blizzard fan, um, I think I still call back to Diablo 3, and uh, they actually announced Diablo 3 at the WWI in Paris. Uh, I think it was 2008, okay. I think, or something like that. Uh, but they announced it with music. And so just the, the whole arena went just dark. They turned off all the lights. Oh, my and gosh. And then you just heard this bring, ding, 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 uh, echoing I through. And everyone just was there. like, oh, this is, this is actually happening. Um, so I, I love all of the Diablo music. Um, Russell actually composed a lot of that. And so it's, quite, it's always nice when you've got someone who's composed the music conducting an orchestra, playing the music. It feels like it's the most authentic version yeah. you'll hear. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it here for the first time. And uh, I think for me, I was kind of looking through the playlist, uh, the Warbringers Jaina oh. track. I think I, I think that's going to bring me to tears. And it's I just, a catchy the whole one. Thing. It's yeah. a really catchy tune. Yeah. Um, I always worry that the Colterian Navy is, is not as strong as it could be because all of the sailors in that song sound fantastic. They do. And you've got to think there's a really good sailor out there who just can't sing. And so, you know, meanwhile, Sandalari Navy, they'll let anyone in. Yeah. As long as you're good at being a Navy guy, you're not a good singer, doesn't matter, Mom. That's okay. That's fine, exactly. You're fine. Whereas, <laughs> Colterans, apparently, all fantastic singers. That's amazing how uh, that works out. And in the Russian version, actually, you can hear all the different versions online, but the Russian version was sung by an actual group of Russian sailors, like literally, like in one take before they went out to sea. It's just so amazing to I be able to do that. Sailors just must be good singers. Just naturally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like a prerequisite or something. It's, it's, an, odd, it's an odd skill set. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, thank you for all the amazing musical facts. Oh, Who knew you were I, again, so... Again, from the, from the streets, we yeah. learn a lot of things out there. 
And definitely you've experienced, you know, this show several times now. Yes. How many times did you this say that? This is my been? third Gamescom third here with Blizzard. Third Gamescom. Um, but I've been to many Gamescoms and Blizzcons before, enjoying all of these sorts of Blizzard fan events. And the, the, the VGL concert is always fantastic. And I mm -hmm. think game music is 50% of the experience. It's uh, 100%. You, you can certainly... I would say it's 100%. It, it may actually be... <laughs> part it, of it. No, I think exactly. Huge part of it. It changes the emotion of a moment makes it even more memorable too because yeah. you you hear a song and you instantly go back to you know your time playing wow your first time exactly. walking into you know s all those different locations exactly. like going up into stormwind and hearing stormwind the is the iconic of, one i yeah. was gonna say that i just didn't want to like get too you didn't want to go to <laughs> alliance horde bias don't worry i'm for the horde guys anyway so it's fine i'm for the alliance so, so again it proves not yeah. everyone makes good choices all the time <laughs> and I think, you know, I'm glad We're that the Alliance is, is represented on this stage. It is good. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a shame, really, because the Horde, we've, we've had a tough run of things recently. Uh, you know, we've, we've been going through some kind of uh, cultural changes within yeah. the Horde. Yeah. But the thing is, is we're all still very much for the Horde. Yeah. And we had... <laughs> we had the uh, the old soldier cinematic came out. Uh, That's right. And that was absolutely beautiful. We had Sour Fang, uh, him uh, kind of experiencing the emotions. That I, as a as a horde, I'm a Tauren paladin, and so I don't see myself quite as um, uh, kind of uh, Bernie Tree as uh -huh. some of the other horde yeah. members. And so it's quite nice to see Sour Fang represented up there, uh, and and how he felt, and actually. Him and Zappy Boy, or Rokan as his actual name is, um, them actually kind of agreeing together that the Horde is bigger than that and actually they still need to fight together yeah. uh, for, for what is right, uh, which is obviously for the Horde. <laughs> well, you were talking about who you play as. Is it always usually a paladin? Yeah, chief, chiefly, I used to play a gnome warrior back okay. in yeah back in classic. In vanilla. I'm a I'm a red pally. I okay. usually go that route. Um, but yeah, I think uh, th that's the thing. I also like going over to you know different alliance classes too sometimes and seeing how far I can level them. And it's just good to get as much experience just to get into Definitely. more of the gameplay stuff. But yeah, you yeah. have like so much more um, like memories and I, things I've to been, share. Exactly, I'm sure. I've been playing World of Warcraft for near 15 years, and wow. it's by far the best 15 years of my life. And now um, you're here you know. at Gamescom. Exactly, and that's things. I think it led Working to here. for Blizzard. See, Mum, it did matter. <laughs> I was up late playing video games for this, for this moment. And she's watching with a tear in her eye, knowing Aww. that I was right all along. Aww, so. Is she still watching uh, three years in? I hope so. All right. I hope so. I didn't even consider that she wouldn't be. <laughs> All right. We'll, well, I'm pretty excited. That's a, such a lovely story. We're about to hit the stage now, and Video Games Live is about to perform. So awesome. stay tuned. Yeah, they're already there set up back there, as you this can see. So we're going to see a professional conductor have a go, and then afterwards you can see how two actual, you know. Conducting real, skills. Yeah, exactly. And you can pick. Tell us in, tell us in the chat who you yeah. think conducts better. Definitely me. <laughs> Hallo Köln, schön, dass ihr den Weg in Halle 7 zur Blizzard-Bühne gefunden habt. Seid ihr gut drauf? So, ihr wisst alle, weswegen wir uns hier eingefunden haben. Der Moment ist da. Musik ist immer ein wirklich wichtiger Bestandteil unserer Lieblingsspiele. Und deswegen begrüßt zusammen mit mir Video Games Live mit Russell Brower.
Ladies and gentlemen, video games life. Russell, thank you so much. Thank every single one of you for joining us here at Gamescom. Once again, having a full orchestra on stage is just amazing. Russell, how are you? I'm great. It's so nice to be back again. Thank you for having me. Russell. I had a teeny tiny peek on the set list and you brought great, great songs with you. Great music we're gonna hear here on stage. What, 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 what do the audience have to expect? Well, now that we've played the Warcraft medley, we have to do that. It's classic. But now we want to play for you the main themes from all our franchises, the stuff you really enjoy, and we have five or six new things you've never heard before live. Isn't that awesome? Round of applause for Russell Brower and Video Games Live. I'll visit you a bit later. And I would say the stage is all yours.
international task force charged with ending the war and restoring liberty to all nations. Overwatch. Soldiers, scientists, adventurers, idols. Guardians who secure global peace for a generation. Under its steadfast protection, the world recovered. And today, though its watch has ended, its soaring ideas, freedom and equality will never be That was so cool! In that one battle, they had Soundquake. Remember, he has, like, chest missiles? So which one's your favorite? Mine's Fusionator. No, 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 no. Tracer. Yeah, Tracer. She's like, she has love. The cavalry's here. Everybody knows Overwatch got shut down. Half of them are just mercenaries now. could always use more heroes.
Cologne. Video games live just for you here at Gamescom and Russell. We already spoke earlier that you have 12 songs with you. And um, let me just quickly come up to you up here. Oh, it's nice up here. I understand why you love it so much up here, to be honest. And um, Russell, we already spoke about it. Three Gamescom premieres, and on top of that, six world premieres that have never been performed live. I mean, this is the perfect audience to uncover these songs, right? The audience doesn't get better than this. Thank you all so much. We can feel it up here. And I mean, I'm looking toward this concert all year. What about you? Very much so, uh, especially a year that we can uh, bring out so much, so many new things. It's really exciting. And we're not done just yet, right? No, nope, we got a good chunk to go, and this is really good stuff. Stick around. All right, then I'll leave you to it, guys. Video Games Live and Russell Brower. That. You have no idea what I am capable of. Good. Because you must be ready for anything. Hanzo. Well done. But greater challenges still await us. I believe we are ready. It's time to find out.
we would know peace. But it was not to be. For Diablo's essence lingers in the black soul stone. I cannot destroy the stone. to be hidden, even from the angels. I pray that it will be enough. finished and you should all run Malfail supposed to be the most advanced security system on the planet. We don't have all day. Hurry up. Enough. Give me a of satellite. Of course. Are you certain the target is on sight? Oh, she's here all right. Oh, I can't. 
cannot wait until the inspection is over. The door. Sombra. <laughs> Durants are down. I am in position. Sombra, time to target. Incoming, right now. Chairman Boitzka, the new guidance systems. There will be the difference in destroying the hated Omnics. Tell me we're still on schedule. Omnium will not wait for us to be ready before they attack again. Our first moments in a decade. This will ensure the future of Russia. Just a little bit further. Let's move! Quoi? Widowmaker, hold the perimeter. We'll take over. what it took for me to make this meeting happen. Relájate, I'm not going to kill you. I mean, I'm the one that set off the alarm. Sombra, do you have the target? Okay, listen. I'm here to make a friend and show you something I found. Tell me. What would happen if the people of Russia learned that their defender against the Omnics was actually getting her tech from the enemy? What would that do to the future of Russia? What do you want? The most powerful woman in Russia? <laughs> I've always wanted a friend like that. So I'm thinking. I don't let these images appear on every hall of it in the world. And you help out your new friend every now and then. What do you say? Clock sticky, amiga. As if I had the choice. Now what? Friend, I'll be in touch. Boop. Mission failed. Target escaped. Get back to the ship.
भाई The swarm brought ruin to our world. Our proud people became refugees. And yet, they could not shatter our unity. For we are bound by the Kala, the sacred union of our every thought and emotion. Ours is a cycle of hatred. Alliances forged and broken. We have paid the price for sharing this world. And we have forgotten what makes us strong.
with emotion. There's still more to come though as There well. is, there it's... is still more to come. We're gonna go back to the concert very soon, but oh my God, I I didn't know what I, I expected. I expected something fantastic, yeah. but it somehow surpassed my just expectations. Just all of my hair just stands on end. Yeah. I don't know what, what music does it, but this music apparently, this I don't know what This music notes. does, yeah. It's just I, all of them. All of, I, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, you know, I picked Jaina, but seeing this live, I, just they're all so amazing in their own way and to see it perform that live one just then yeah gets your height doesn't it yes it does yeah. battle for azeroth i mean all the overwatch cinematics the infiltration scene with the yeah. two little boys yeah. um just completely blown away i really had to hold back tears i'm not even joking wow that's, that's <laughs> yeah I, I i love i love it so much and it is i it, being here and feeling the sound yes that's the the weird thing it's just so loud and so powerful yes feeling uh, the sound uh you know seeing the choir perform on key beautifully i used to be part of a choir nothing like this okay. this was incredible let's have a look at it all right back to the concert Journal entry 1963-4, Harold Winston. Status update on specimen eight. By now, we're all used to our super intelligent gorillas on the colony, but the hamster, <laughs> we've named him Hammond, continues to be one of our biggest surprises. Even though he's grown from the genetic modification, we have more trouble keeping track of him than any of the other animals. Somehow, he managed to get out of his cage again. It took us days to find him. I can't help but wonder what it is he's looking for when he gets out there. He's shown impressive problem-solving skills and adaptability to new situations. And he's overcome all the challenges that have been placed in front of him. I, for one, can't wait to see what trouble the little guy gets up to next. Shoot. 
to save her daughter's life and pray she still did breath. But there he found upon those distant shores. Those savage foes, his daughter stood aside and buried deep beneath the waves, betrayed by family to his nation. Listening now. Father. I heard, I heard across a moon at sea the old voice warning me. Be Okay. <laughs> what a performance. Well, yeah, a beautiful ballad. I Yes, there are no words really to describe what it's like to actually be here in person, but I'm sure you guys felt the emotion and everything. Um, there's so much to this concert. There's so much beautiful symphony and, and oomph and to see all the cinematics and I'm sure the nostalgia and everyone here. This is definitely one of the big things to see today at oh, Gamescom. It always. was the biggest thing. Exactly. And then you can you, this whole crowd here. Uh, you know, yeah. just, just clapping and cheering, but also just everyone mesmerized. Mesmerized, by, by these moments. taken by the music. It is fantastic. I was, yeah. it's, a, it's a different take on Wrecking Ball. I've not heard that version before. Yes, it's the first time yeah. I heard that too, I like I liked Miley Cyrus's yeah. one, but this one, I actually really? think is a better Wrecking Ball. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> it was beautiful, beautiful music. Um, all right, so up next, what do we got? We got Heroes. We're going to take a look at, you know, my chat with Ka'eo and yes. everything about the new, uh, you know, character, playable character, Primeval himself, uh, but yeah. Mephisto. Mephisto. It is um, a primeval name. He didn't really have a choice, did he? No. Nope. You know, getting named Mephisto. <laughs> With a name like that, yeah. You're not going to be, <laughs> you know, you're narrowing your options down. That's true. I That's it's true. It's a tough, tough thing to put on someone. Yeah. Um, also, obviously, uh, you know, we were conducting earlier. We were uh, during know, the rehearsal exactly. of this performance. And I mean, seeing Russell up on stage there, you know, he he gets involved. He does. It's very active. It very seems passionate. Actually quite a kind of cardio heavy uh, job. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm seeing that. I'm glad we just tried out. I don't want to keep doing that. That's, <laughs> That's far right. too much effort. It's very, I mean, there's so many things happening at once. Not only are you keeping the tempo, but you know, it's an emotional thing. You got to make sure to conduct properly. Plus, when you've got the cinematics and the animations playing up on the big screen, that I would keep getting distracted. <laughs> yes. I'd be like, oh, oh this is a good I bit up there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those were really great. Well, let's take a look at that right now, shall we? I think it'd be good. People yeah. can, you can decide.
decide who you think did better. You know, just let us know in the chat. Just let us know. Yeah. Take a look. <laughs> A new realm has come to the Nexus, and with it, untapped power and a bitter feud for control. Realm lords, factions, and heroes will stop at nothing to claim victory in the mountains of Alterac. Alterac Pass is a large three-lane battleground that hosts the familiar war cries of longtime rivals, the Horde, and the Alliance as they clash in the Nexus. Unlike traditional battlegrounds, Alterac Pass does not feature a structural core outside the Hall of Storms, but in its place stand the respective faction leaders for each side. General Vandar Stormpike for the Alliance, and General Drek'thar of the Frostwolf Clan for the Horde. Players must fight their way through traditional forts and keeps to find themselves face to face with their opposition's leader. If you want to claim victory, you'll have to bring them down. The generals carry with them a lot of the flavor and execution from their AV predecessors. Both will charge at incoming challengers, dealing damage, and follow with a whirlwind ability that damages all enemies in the area around them. Should you engage and find the need to retreat, the generals will leash back to their starting positions and begin to regenerate their health. Also note that for every keep your team manages to destroy, the enemy team's general will suffer a loss in armor. Positioned above and below the middle lane are two sets of prisoner camps that hold access to the battleground's central objective. Periodically, prisoners will spawn inside opposing camps guarded by prison defenders. Teams must invade enemy territory, take out the prison defenders, and free their captive while looking to ensure the enemy isn't successful at doing the same. After a brief channel on the enemy's capture cage, an escape sequence will initiate. If you can maintain control throughout the escape sequence, amidst the enemy team's defense, and any additional defender spawns, your prisoner will escape, and your team will reap the objective reward. For teams that have lost control of their prison camp, a simple right-click on the capture cage will immediately stop progress of the escape sequence, but a full channel will be required to take it back. Taking the map objective on Alterac Pass will spawn a cavalry unit in each of your lanes. These mounted units will push into enemy territory and support allied players and minions with a damage and speed boosting aura in their proximity. This damage bonus will increase in strength for each subsequent objective completion across a game. Alongside the battleground objective, spread across Alterac Pass are two Knoll siege camps and two Ice Giant boss camps. The Knolls will push in a similar manner to the Hellbat siege camps on Braxis Holdout, providing a large health pool per unit and a cleave attack that applies a stacking armor debuff to anything it hits. The Ice Giants function similarly to the Grave Golems on Cursed Hollow, but utilize an Ice Shard ability that will damage and massively slow in an area. Specific to Alterac Pass are the addition of mud pits around the objective area. Be mindful of your positioning, as the longer you stand in these areas, the greater hit you'll take to your movement speed. 
If you must move through them, do so quickly and without threat of opposition. Lastly, should your team find success with the objective, do your best to push and fight alongside your cavalry. The buffs provided by these units hold the mainstay of value in their pushing power, so make the most of it. Due to the health regeneration mechanic on the generals, retreat isn't an effective option against them. Bolster your push for victory by executing an all-in with your cavalry and whatever mercs you can recruit. The horns of war echo inside the valleys of Alterac Pass. Will you join the Alliance in an effort to control this new realm? Or will you side with the Horde, just like every other barbarous, unkempt brute? We'll see you in the next episode. For the Alliance! For the Horde! I'm here with K.O. Milker, who is the production director on Heroes of the Storm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, hi, how's it going? I'm good. Uh, are you excited to be here at Gamescom? Absolutely. Gamescom is the coolest, the second coolest show that I go to after BlizzCon, so love being here. So you're stoked, and it's pre BlizzCon. Now we're here to talk about Heroes, and of course, uh, you guys have a comic book coming out in about a month. So can you tell us a bit about what's going to be going on with that? Sure. Well, I mean, just to give a little backstory here. Yeah. Historically, we've kind of avoided the whole storyline of, of what was going on in Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. We literally <laughs> said, don't think about this too hard. But over the, across the last couple months of this year, we started digging into the actual lore of the Nexus. And we've done that over a couple comic books so far. The first yeah. one uh, came out uh, earlier. We've actually done two so far. So our third one's going to be coming out here next month. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is actually focused on the Raven Lord, who we've been telling a storyline so far, but it's also about now bringing in the Lady of Thorns, who's the narrator from maps like Dragonshire and Garden of Terror. So we're really digging into more about these, these really rich characters and their narrators that you've heard, you play, you know, play the game, yeah. you've heard them in the game before. Now we're kind of talking about what is this underlying conflict? Why are these guys all fighting with each other? And what are we battling for in the Nexus? And kind of how did the Nexus come to be? Like, yeah, that's really cool. All right, so now the big thing is Diablo 2's primeval Mephisto. He's back, and now he's playable for the first time in Heroes of the Storm. So can you tell us a bit about his abilities and what we can expect playing him? The, the magic of Heroes we get to pull from 20 plus years of Blizzard characters. So going back to Diablo 2, bringing Mephisto in, a primeval that I think a lot of players are familiar with. Mm -hmm. I've beat on him many, many times over the years. <laughs> uh, the Heroes incarnation is a really aggressive mage, like a ranged assassin. He comes in with this play style based mostly around his trait, yeah. uh, which is called uh, the Lord of Hatred. And his trait basically makes it so that anytime he does an ability damage to an enemy hero, mm -hmm. it lowers his cooldowns on yeah. all of his abilities, his basic abilities. So um, <laughs> this is a, a hero that you really want to get in the thick of things. You want to be casting your abilities. You want to be dealing damage to other heroes so that you can kind of stay in the fray. Your cooldowns will be reduced, and you can keep doing damage. Yeah. And uh, what about his other heroic ability? Because this is his first one. So can you tell us about what that is? Sure. Uh, so he's got two heroics. Uh, the first one is Consumed Souls. This is one that's actually a, a global ability where he channels, immediately reveals all enemy heroes on the battleground. And then after a few seconds delay, it will do damage to them. Oh, so nice. this is really good. Uh, it's really good either as an initiation technique where you can kind of figure out where everybody is, do damage and right before you jump in. I think it also slows them as well in that. So. Uh, it also can be a really good finishing move. So good if, you had, if, if you had a big battle and everybody's kind of running away and they're all really low, this is a really good thing to do to just kind of hit all the enemy heroes at once with ability. Nice. Uh, yeah. He even has a teleport ability, I saw. Yes. Uh, so this is called Shade of Mephisto. Mm -hmm. This is his E ability. And it effectively lets him teleport away from where he is right now. This is really good as, as an engage, though, because what happens yeah. is he goes in, he goes to wherever you target, he can do damage, but then after a short delay, he goes back to the point that he started from again. Nice. The downside of this is not like an escape because you know exactly where he's going to be. So yeah. if you use this, it's a really good opportunity for the enemy team to be able to take you out as well. So nice. you have to use it carefully. So you guys have made a lot of changes to uh, the map. Can you talk about what those changes are? Like the layout looks different. 
it seems to be that people will hop in and immediately notice there's things that they can do that they couldn't before. Sure. So maybe collaborate that. So yeah, so last year we brought Hanamura in as our first Overwatch Battleground, something we were really excited about. It also had a lot of like really new ideas that we pushed on it. So it had payloads on it, but it had a lot going on. Yeah. So at any given moment, there were up to four payloads that were going on that yeah. Battleground. So we got a lot of really great feedback on that map. We actually pulled it out of rotation so that we could Take, take another look at it. And what we've done really is distill the gameplay down to the elements that we thought were the coolest. It really focuses down to one payload out at a time, and that payload goes in either direction. So when teams will go and battle for that payload, they're kind of pushing and pulling on it. So it's right. not like taking turns one or the other. At any given time, both teams really want to fight for it. And this is creating a, a moment on this battleground where uh, the payload's going on one of uh, multiple routes, but and they kind of progress as it goes on. So it, if a team finishes one payload, the next time it'll go on a slightly different route. Okay. And it's really all about bringing you together for these really epic team fights, but with a moving objective. So because of that, the way the jungle is shaped and the terrain that you're going on really dramatically influences the way that battles are going to go down, mm -hmm. which heroes are viable. So a lot of interesting things are going to happen in the team fights as you do it. Because it's not like fighting in one static objective location. Right. It's always moving. Uh, so that's something we're revealing here at Gamescom. It's playable on the floor. It'll be coming to the PTR here really soon so everyone can check it out. Okay. Yeah. And what about, uh, would you say, for the recon now? So it used to be called the boss, and now you've changed it up where it's a new camp that people can capture and yeah, we, we did remove the, there was a Mega Enforcer boss that was at the center of the map in, yeah. the, in the previous version of Hanamura. For Hanamura Temple, that's actually been re replaced as the spawn point for uh, the payloads. Got it. And uh, across the rest of the map, though, there have been a bunch of changes that kind of support the new payload design. Mm -hmm. But there was a new a new mercenary camp, which is called the Recon Camp. Yeah. This one kind of works like a watchtower that you're used to in Heroes, but instead of just kind of capturing it, you have to defeat the mercenaries that are on it first. Oh, okay. And then once you defeat them, you gain vision at that watchtower, and then they actually defend it. So th these these two watchtowers that are the recon camps that are in the battleground uh, provide really key vision across the center area of the map, and this is as a two lane battleground. It's actually pretty critical to kind of yeah. understand how teams are moving across that. Uh, so I I'm really excited to see how this mechanic plays out. It's something new that's kind of coming to the game for the first time, and I think it, we'll, we'll see if we, we like the way this goes. It may be something we could even bring to other battlegrounds later as yeah. well. Yeah, so. that would be really yeah. cool. It's been a really awesome year for Heroes. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, along with exploring the kind of backstory of the Nexus with the comic books, we've also brought in a lot of uh, themed events and content to the game where, you know, everything from our Mecha Storm event at the beginning of the year, we brought in giant Mecha uh, uh, skins for characters yeah. to our most recent one was Viper, where we kind of explored this this kind of dark and ominous force that with skins that came in for Ana, Genji, uh, and Stukov. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the game's just having so much fun alternating between brand new heroes, hero reworks, and really cool themed skin events, and then doing things like bringing in Hanamura Temple right now. Yeah. We just brought in Warcraft to the Nexus with our Echoes of Alterac event and our brand new Alterac Pass Battleground. So the game is just evolving like crazy, getting better and better, and, you know, there's never been a better time to play Heroes of the Storm. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Kao. It was great meeting you and talking Heroes of the Storm and all the new content you guys have going on this year. Come join us in the Nexus and experience a new kind of MOBA. Well, what an amazing day so far. I am absolutely blown away. This has been my first day live show with Blizzard. I gotta say, it's 10 out of 10 for me. We got three more to come as well. Yeah, we this do. Is, this is just the beginning. Three more um, days. What a way to start it off though. Yep. At, you know, 11 a.m. this morning, we got to see Shooting Star, the new yes. Diva animated short. And an incredible anime short, definitely probably one of my favorites. Um, you see a lot about her backstory and, uh, you know, her overload ability, Whoa, you know. We shouldn't spoil it too much. If okay. you didn't get a chance <laughs> to see Shooting Star already, you can catch it right now. Check it out. Welcome to another episode of Shooting Star. Today, we set our sights on Puza, home of the eSports champion turned ace pilot, Diva. I play to win. At just 19, she's become a national hero. Only last week, she risked her life again, defending the city from the Kishinomniks. She and the Mecha Squad took a few hits, but they pulled off another victory. Now, Diva is celebrating with some hard-earned glitz and glamour. <laughs> hey, Hana, shouldn't you be out signing autographs or something? The hottest spots in the city, eating the finest foods, and hanging out with other superstars. But life wasn't always like this for Diva. I wonder what glitz and glamour tastes like. Hey, why are we on leave with the rest of the squad? I could use a little glitz and glamour in my life, you know? It's overrated, Taehyun. This, this is where the magic happens. It's like how we used to stay up late and work on your hoverbike. <laughs> you mean the one you wrecked? 
Really? You're still mad about that? We won the race! Yeah! And you almost killed yourself! Nanokawa, enjoy! <sighs> you beat the Kishin. They won't be back for months. You need a break. What the fuck? You can't me! I'm hit! I... I can't. Uh... Hana? We barely won last time. The enemy is out there. Adapting. And getting stronger. The rest of the squad. The country? They're all counting on me. If I make a mistake and the Kishin get through us, we lose everything. I... Uh... I need to finish the tests. Stop putting it all on yourself. It's okay to ask for help. I've got this. Really. <sighs> Command says we're in the clear, but hey, what do... That can't be right. It's too soon. Need your help. Really? Uh, okay. Okay. The reactor's getting unstable, so you can't stay out there for too long. But you'll blow the whole thing. Weapon systems yeah, are offline. Yeah. The reactor. And, uh, the cooling we system. We can overload it, just like the hover bike. What? Are you crazy? This isn't a stupid race. I know. If we don't do this, thousands of people will die. Okay. Buy me some time. Let's do it. Reactor's going critical. You have 60 seconds until it blows. That's not fast enough. We'll be in the city. Uh, Anna? Trust me, Dayan. I'll see you at the finish line.
flies ahead. Incredibly, thanks to Diva, no one was injured. She stopped the Kishin single-handedly, and authorities confirm she emerged without a scratch. She's currently enjoying some time off to celebrate her victory. In other news... Oh, man. This time off is great, isn't it? What's not to like? There's delicious food and drinks. Yeah. And good friends. The kind that are always there for you. When you need them most. Uh, right. <laughs> and seeing as I helped save the city, how about getting me on the VIP list for one of those fancy restaurants you always go to? You know, I think you've been watching too many Hollywoods. There we have it, guys. That brings us to an end.